Okay, everyone knows about the things Germany is famous for being good at. Germany has great beer. Germany has great cars. Germany is really good at soccer, or they used to be. But in this video, I am gonna talk about things about life in Germany that I think are underappreciated or underrated. So without further ado, let's get into it. The absolute vastness and rich history that is just commonplace in day-to-day -day life here in Germany. Right now I'm sitting on the steps of a church that's from the 12th century. And I feel like people that are from Germany really sort of take this for granted. And even I started to take it for granted after living here for a few years. I remember when I first came here, I was just awestruck by how old some of these buildings were and how much history there was on the things that I was walking around on. But you do get used to it. And it's only once I started to read some Ken Follett books like The Pillars of the Earth, which is about the making of a cathedral that I really started to reappreciate really just how crazy it is that there's this insane history all around us. This behind me here, the Kloster Kronberg, which is a former monastery, originated in 1078. It's over a thousand years ago, so. And I feel like it's kind of taken for granted for and pretty underrated here in Germany. This culture of when people buy a home, they buy a home for life. In the United States, I feel like there's this culture and attitude of people buying starter homes, which is a home that you're buying that you know you're not gonna live in forever, that maybe you're actually gonna only live in it for a couple of years. Whereas I feel like the idea of a starter home doesn't really, generally speaking, exist in Germany. When people are building or buying a house, they have the attitude and mindset that this is going to be my home for life. And I feel like the American mentality when it comes to home ownership is very stressful and it kind of is a nice metaphor for American culture as a whole. It's always about, okay, leveling up, leveling up, okay, what's next, leveling up, which I think is a, a very American mentality in a lot of aspects of life. So I feel like this mentality of this house being a home for life gives a person a sense of peace and security, whereas the American mentality when it comes to homes often is sort of a stressful one and one of anxiety and always leveling up and not settling and finding peace. So I think this idea and mentality that Germans have when it comes to homes is very underrated. Behind China, Russia, and Brazil, Germany has the most neighboring countries bordering it in the world. And this is not something to be overlooked. The United States, we border Mexico and Canada. We do not have such close and easy access to other cultures. The fact that people grew up in Germany in the heart of Europe with access to nine different countries on its border is really an incredible thing. Being able to drive two hours and be in France, drive one hour and be in Switzerland, or go east and drive and be in the Czech Republic, or up north to Denmark, it's, it's a really valuable thing. I was just talking to a former teammate of mine on the Unicorns, and he talked about how, yeah, the first time he left Germany to go to a different country was probably before he could walk, and he'd been going to different countries in Europe that spoke different languages all growing up. The first time I went to a country that spoke a different language than mine was when I came to Germany in 2016. This is totally underappreciated by people that live in Germany and grew up with this. Very underrated. Now the next point, oh, sorry, one sec, my brother's FaceTiming me. What's up, Nels? What's up, Ant? How's it in California? It's good, but I really miss German Netflix. They had such good stuff on there. Oh, you should be using CyberGhost. You know you can access 9,000 servers in 90 different countries. You'll be able to get different content based on the country that you choose. That's how I watch Yellowstone here in Germany on Paramount Plus. Just switch my IP to USA. Oh, Yellowstone is phenomenal. We need to go to Montana. Yeah, and if we use CyberGhost, we can change our IP address and possibly get cheaper flights and hotel options for that trip. Okay, that's pretty cool. Wait, can I switch my IP address to Austria and watch Formula One for free? Yeah, you just switch to Austria and you watch it on that ORF channel. A lot of people in Germany are also using it to read news articles that are blocked on American sites. Oh, you're paying for YouTube Premium, right? Oh yeah, no ads on YouTube videos. Plus I get unlimited access to YouTube music, so I don't even need Spotify. Yeah, if you use CyberGhost, you can get YouTube Premium for way cheaper. You switch to an Indian IP address and you can get it for one euro 50 a month. That's amazing. But don't they just have access to all your data? No, not at all. They have this thing called the no logs policy, so CyberGhost doesn't even know what you're doing online. Totally encrypted and private. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, it's a world leading VPN. It's literally the number one most recommended VPN on Trustpilot. 
38 million people use it. You could be 38 million and one. I don't know, how much is it? If you use the link in my description, we get like 83% off, four months free, you'll pay just over two euros a month. Well, I don't use euros anymore. I use dollars. <laughs> Whatever, you can just use my account. One account can be used on up to seven different devices. And it works on every major platform. Plus, there's a 45 day money back guarantee. So, it's risk free. You're welcome. All right, I'll check it out. Yeah, great choice. Guys, I really recommend CyberGhost VPN. Not only is it a great product for you, but it also helps support me and my YouTube channel if you use the link in the description. So check it out below. All right, back to the video. The diversity of both the humans and the geography in Germany. This is a very underrated aspect of the country. When I first came to Germany, I just thought, oh yeah, German people, they're all the same. They're the same in the North, they're the same in the South. Germans are Germans are Germans. Now after living here, I am shocked that this is one country. Look at the map of the Holy Roman Empire. That is the diversity of different people and culture in Germany. It is still very alive and present today. I would honestly say that people in the South Southern Bavaria are much more culturally close to Austrians than they are culturally close to people up way far in the North of Germany. And I'd say these people, these Northern Germans that are way up near the border of, of Denmark, they're closer to Danes than they are to Bavarians in terms of culture. And so I feel like just this line that's drawn around Germany as the border for Germans is almost arbitrary. And there's just a wild, range of diversity when it comes to people and cultures in Germany. Germans are very different across the country. And in going with that, there's also a diversity of landscape and geography that I think doesn't get talked about when people speak of Germany. Everyone just thinks, oh yeah, Germany looked the same all over. No, you go to Southern Germany, you've got the mountains, the Alps, you go to the Southwest, you've got the Black Forest, you go up to the North, you've got the ocean, you've got different beaches, you've got like the islands, silt. And then you go over into the east and you've got what they called Saxon Switzerland, which is basically this different type of landscape geography, rocky climbing areas. And in the west again to the Rhine River Valley, I mean, there's just different types of landscapes and geography all over Germany. And it's got a, a wide array of landscapes that I think is very underrated. how walkable Germany is. And not just small towns here like Schwäbischal, but also even some of the bigger cities, like even Stuttgart is so much more walkable than cities in the United States. And this is just a, a natural thing for people that grew up in Germany. Of course, yeah, the city is made for people, human beings to walk around, not for cars. But I feel like it's a very underrated thing because it's just so normal. So how walkable cities, towns, and villages are is very underrated. So in Germany, when there is standstill traffic on the Autobahn, all the cars move off to the sides and create an alleyway in the middle of the road. This is known as a Rettungsgasse, which literally translates to rescue alley. And it's so that emergency vehicles can still get through easily and quickly when there's standstill parking lot style traffic. Now, of course, in these situations when there's such bad traffic, nobody's in a good mood, nobody's happy about that, but everybody knows and buys into this idea like, hey, I'm annoyed, it's horrible traffic, but I'm still, I'm gonna move off to the side and we're gonna create this lane in the middle for emergency vehicles to take care of people if that needs to happen. We're not taught to do this in the United States and I feel like it's underrated that people do this all the time without fail in Germany. <music> Yesterday I was on a walk and I saw a group of four really young children. They were maybe three, four years old. And they were out riding little bikes and walking with each other. And I was waiting for a parent to come around the corner because obviously kids this young are not out riding their bikes and walking on their own. And I waited and then I realized there was no parent or adult with them. These are just four young little kids out enjoying the town and it is totally normal and totally safe. This is something that you just really would not see in the United States. And to my American brain, it is still very shocking to just see young children roaming about on their own. I feel like this is an underrated aspect of life in Germany, that this is just able to be a totally normal and safe thing. In Germany, you cannot drive a car until you're 18. 
but you can drink beer at 16. In the United States, you can drive a car at 16, but you can't drink beer until you're 21. It's very underrated that Germans do it this way. My dad worked in insurance for a long time, and so he knew the statistics about young drivers getting in accidents. All of us young kids getting our driver's license at 16, he knew there was a very high percentage chance that we would get in an accident in the first 12 months of having a driver's license at this age. And lo and behold, all six Alfieri kids got in some sort of accident at different levels within the first year of having the driver's license. Now, I don't know the German statistics off the top of my head, but I'm assuming that a smaller percentage of drivers in Germany get in an accident in the first year of having your license, just simply because your brain is slightly more developed at 18 than it is at 16. Driving a car is much more dangerous and such a greater responsibility than having a beer. And I feel like in the United States, we have it a little bit mixed up. We think driving a car is safer than drinking a beer. So I'm really a fan of how Germany handles these two topics at these different ages. And I think it's very underrated aspect of life in Germany. German infrastructure. Germany is commonly ranked as the number one country in the world when it comes to infrastructure. I'll just tell you, driving on the roads in Germany is a very pleasurable experience. Driving on the Autobahn is great. Hardly ever any potholes. The roads are in pristine conditions. And I actually really noticed this even more when I was driving out to Cody and Speedy's house the other day. They live outside of Schwäbisch Hall and you have to drive on a bunch of back roads to get there. Not prime roads that are, you know, taken care of all the time and have construction all the time. And even these back roads are just pristine. I will say German construction seems to take quite a long time. There are a few construction projects here around Schwäbisch Hall that they've been working on my entire time here and seem to have made little to no progress. However, when they do finish projects in Germany, they do it well and they do it to last. I think if you wanna really appreciate German roads and German infrastructure, leave the country and go drive on some other ones. I feel like if you grew up in this system, this is just what you know and this is the standard. So even though it is literally ranked number one in infrastructure, I feel like people do not really appreciate that. It's undervalued and therefore it makes my list of underrated things about life in Germany. All right, guys, that is all for today. I wanna to give a shout out again to the sponsor of today's video, CyberGhost VPN. Awesome product that I use every day, multiple times a day. I can highly recommend it to any people who use the internet, which you clearly are by watching this video. And the link to the discount is in the description of this video. Not only does it help you out, but it helps me out. So check it out. All right, guys, that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.